Coming up, the Nova 2 prototype is here. I get a long lost cold steel in a great trade. And then we take a look at all of my recent new knives in four different categories. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my two favorite comments this past week was on my SOCOM Elite short recently put up. And uh, this was Dave Brun 4001. So I've been carrying this knife for 25 years. 25 years. In my opinion, it's the GOAT greatest of all time. So uh, that, that was really cool to see. This, of course, is a video on my 2013 SOCOM Elite. So that's 10 years old. And Man, it's a fantastic knife. Uh, that video, by by the by, was set to the soundtrack of Commando, one of the greatest movies. And someone out there, I can't remember your name now, uh, heard that and, and commented. One of their favorite movies, too. Commando, highly recommended. All right, next up was an interesting one from uh, on the Stroop Knives Push Dagger video. Uh, it's, it's Max Daka 7973 says, nice gimmicky, quote unquote, primitive texture, but the width of the neck on the Push Dagger is too big. It looks like it's painful wedging the fingers apart. No thanks. It's obviously the smaller, uh, uh, it's obvious that the smaller the neck, the closer the grip is to a natural closed fist. Of course, you need some of this width for structural integrity. You can't invert the width and the height entirely. Best option would be probably a circular or elliptical cross section. And uh, if you're following, I like what he says here because that was kind of my feeling about uh, the knife. Uh, I love that Stroop's, uh, Stroop Knives push dagger. And uh, for the purpose, you're going to draw it and stab it into a threat uh, one to several times. But it's not like a hard use knife where you're using it to do anything other than uh, defensive stuff. Uh, so to me, uh, that uh, feeling of discomfort would uh, of having a wide neck coming between the two fingers supporting the blade would only come into effect after a little bit of use, which... Uh, you know, I'm not not planning on anyway, uh, but I really like this comment because I've thought about that, about uh, about push daggers many times, uh, how it should be circular or elliptical in cross section or something um, more comfortable. Yes, but also something that will allow uh, the closest thing to a naturally closed fist without having to accommodate something separating the knuckles. So Max Daka, thanks for the comment. I, I really liked it because A, it's something I've thought about before, but also uh, you were uh, very clear in your ideas, your technical ideas of how a push dagger uh, should really be done. And I appreciate that. All right, that said, uh, why don't we now get to a pocket check? Today in my pocket, as uh, many other days recently, the Tactile Knives Chupacabra. Uh, this was a knife sent to me uh, by Tactile Knives right after um, we had uh, our most recent interview uh, with Mike Miller. And uh, I'm really, really, <laughs> well, grateful that he sent this, but really impressed with this knife. This was something uh, that the All Dallas uh, made company in other words, they're Dallas based and everything they do is made in shop or bought down the street like their stop pins. Um, so this this shop has been making high end knives for a couple of years now. They came out of Tactile Turn, the uh, pen company, and they were striving to make something more affordable. And they did that with this knife, the the anodized aluminum chupacabra that's got an amazing magna cut blade. To me, that is the center point to this. But the I think the main unique selling proposition here is the use of the super lock, the Snex designed super lock. Snex is a uh, is a super uh, engineer knife maker out of Indonesia who uh, for a long time was cataloging his research and development and creating uh, really um, uh, techno, not, not techno, uh, really innovative um, modern folders and his uh, lock here uh, similar to or reminiscent of the shark lock though they they were developed kind of in tandem not in tandem but kind of at the same time 
without the others knowing it, I think. Uh, they're, they're different uh, in the guts, but when you look at them out front, they look kind of similar. Anyway, my point is they achieved it with a more affordable tactile turn. Now, this is a $250 knife, uh, so it's not cheap, but it's more affordable. They're, they are a small, I'm going to say it, boutique brand. And to me, that's a compliment you know they're they're a small atelier if you will that's what they would have called them in france back in the day you know uh during the days of the salon etc so they, they're making some really really amazing knives but they are costing a bit of money because they're uh, all made in-house and very labor intensive with all the milling here we see uh, on the anodized aluminum handle there is no milling there's no micro milling like on the most every other tactile uh, knife and tactile turn product and all that mill work in the handle adds machine time and machine wear and parts wear and that kind of thing so it raises the price naturally of knives so they really hit the mark here by uh, making something less complex that they could charge less for but still give you super high performance i gotta say the blade on this thing is incredible also it feels really good in hand uh i've always been trepidatious about uh, spine mounted locks or secondary locks but uh, this and um, the uh, vision fg from civivi and all the shark locks from demco i don't feel them i don't feel them back there even in a in a real uh hard hammer grip so it's it's just sort of a thing in my mind about spine mounted locks because uh, they work out great so this this knife is awesome. I'm really excited about it, and I've been carrying it quite a bit. Uh, I got to say, I have to admit, more than my rock wall, which, of course, is a little bit smaller and not so much in my uh, wheelhouse. But this knife is great. I've been really liking it, and they sold out lickety split. Uh, so, um, But I know that they're excited about it. They're going to make more of them. They can make them quicker than their other knives, and, of course, they'll be able to sell them quicker than their other knives. So I think this will be a priority for them. Great knife, the Chupacabra in my front right pocket. Speaking of great knives, this one here, I had the Little Bro from Jack Wolf Knives in my front right pocket. You know, I tend to these days, because I um, weather's getting warmer and I'm keeping my phone in my front left pocket, I don't like too much in that pocket. So I've been dropping the slip joint down in with the, uh, with the main folding uh, fixed blade. And I love this knife. This is the perfect size. This is the perfect slip joint as far as I'm concerned, uh, because though I like, uh, I'm more impressed with and kind of wowed by some of the larger um, patterns out there. I just love a small boy's knife because it's not my main carry. It's small, it's discreet, it fits. Uh, and then it's great when you actually need to cut something. Uh, and I gotta say, uh, Jack Wolf Knives has been, obviously they've been killing it from the very start. Uh, but this one here with the blue Kieranite is very fetching to me. I was, I call that like, it looks like you're looking at a picture from the Hubble telescope. Absolutely beautiful. Nice sheen on this uh, machine ground satin blade. It comes to a very thin edge. Great walk and talk. I mean, these are just spectacular. Or I guess I should call them stellar knives. Uh, next up in my waistband, not at the usual appendix, but over here at the three o'clock. Uh, I had the, I, I'm just going to show you the sheath because it's awesome. Cryptek with the big the DCC clip. Uh, but I had the Jed Hornbeak Necromance, an amazing uh, 4.75 to 5 inch. Actually, I don't know as I look at it. I think it's about 4.75 inch fighting blade. That swedge is scandy ground, so sharp as the day is long, uh, but comes in at a more oblique angle, perfect for back cuts and the kind of things you use the back edge for in fighting applications. Uh, the main edge here is hollow ground. Uh, you got this beautiful straight and then almost this almost a Tanto style blade. You say almost uh, because or I say almost because it doesn't have that secondary portion here that's flat ground. It's just a hollow ground coming straight. Uh, to the tip but it does have sort of a secondary tip there in that angle change just a great asymmetrical fighter i love this thing the ergonomics on this are stupid sorry <laughs> but they are insane they feel so good it feels like this was the knife uh that i was born with in my hand the grip is so so perfect on that um of course i didn't use that for anything today but it was on my hip bringing confidence and also just 
uh, cool factor. All right, uh, last up, this is a great knife. I love this thing. I'd been resistant to bird knives forever, I guess, since I could afford Spydercos. Uh, but I've been seeing this knife in the videos of uh, of uh, Mr. Bab of the uh, Libra fighting system, Scott Bab. Uh, this is his folder that he uses and he has it set up left hand carry but he carries it in the right pocket so that when you draw it you draw it like this it deploys with that wave opener on the pocket seam and you can wrap it into your hand in pakal grip like this or you can leave it in that grip uh, but i am uh, very impressed with his uh his fighting combinations if you if you look at the libra fighting uh, videos on instagram he shows you different combinations in front of dummies you know uh, uh, on the bob dummy and he it's like watching a boxer practice combinations and uh is same thing uh, with the knife with drawing the knife with using the empty hand uh for uh, creating space or or reducing space and then using the knife uh, that you draw out uh to take care of whatever that fighting situation is uh i think it's a very interesting and and um viable form of martial arts to learn um uh, especially for certain lifestyles <laughs> like if you're an undercover cop or something like that it uh, seems like libra fighting uh, which is all close in and just caveman I i'm not reducing it to caveman like uh but it, it 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 works well with all your gross motor motions uh that are likely to happen during an adrenaline dump and a confrontation so libra fighting very cool that's why i've been carrying this knife and and uh enjoying it in either in the back right or back left pocket all right that's what i had on me tell me what you had on you put it uh, in the comments below of course as i like to say it gives me inspiration doesn't mean i'm gonna go out and buy them but uh oftentimes the knives you guys mention uh, make me think in different directions. And uh, that's one thing about the knife junkie. And that's why I call this channel that is because like a junkie, and I, I don't mean to be flip about the, uh, about the reference, but you're ravenous in a way that is uh, not um, rational. And for me, it goes in all directions. As you can see, swords, tomahawks, uh, small fixed blade, slip joints, uh, any kind of folder, any kind of fixed blade. I'm just, I'm in. So. There you go. All right. So let's talk about the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway coming up. Uh, let me take a sip of beverage here. April 18th. That's uh, tomorrow night. Uh, if you're listening to this on the day it drops, which is unlikely. But uh, we're giving away a special knife here. And I have a secondary thing going into the package, but I'm not going to talk about it right here. Uh, but here it is. This is the uh, this is the Civivi Spiny Dogfish. And this is a Gavco designed, uh, uh, design designed by Michael Gavick. He is a custom knife maker, a very, very cool guy. He came up right along with Tough Thumbs, who's uh, Tough Knives, Jeff Blauvelt, uh, in Pennsylvania at the same time earlier on. I, I know uh, Michael Gavick uh, is now in Florida, but he just produces these amazing um, custom folding, modern folding modern folding knives all named after sharks and based on shark designs this is the spiny dogfish a very cool compound ground um so that's hollow there that's flat there uh what are you going to call that modified sheep's foot i'm not sure what that is modified shark's foot uh that's tm'd i can't use that uh really nice choil this was gifted to the channel by this old sword blade reviews dave uh, he has an exquisite collection and uh, keeps them in exquisite shape or just buys them, reviews them, and then sometimes sends them along to me. And I greatly appreciate that. It's hard not adopting each one into the collection. This one is going to a lucky gentleman junkie with a sharpening system. I, I just uh, I'm very excited about that, too. Uh, but this obviously is the main is the main attraction. It's the knife. Gorgeous thing. All right. So we're going to be giving this away tomorrow night to a lucky gentleman junkie. Want to thank patrons for their um, patronage. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, also, you can check out the newsletter, knifejunkie.com slash newsletter. Do that. And I'll tell you why. Because if the bottom falls out and all knife creators out there are, uh, are not allowed to uh, show their wares on all the main platforms 
or talk about this subject on the main platforms, I'll still be able to reach you with this vital information. Uh, so check it out. Uh, knifechunky.com slash newsletter. All right, a uh, little, little note here. Uh, I've been finally um, kitting out my Doug Ritter RSK Mark V. That's the tiny little neck knife that comes in the uh, Altoids style tin. I'm a huge addict of Altoids, by the way. I love those things. Uh, but I'm trying to, I was trying to figure out what I could put in here with the knife. Okay, you have the knife, which is great. Um, but I decided since I cut myself a bit, I would put these um, butterfly stitches in there or the butterfly bandages, some super glue, a lighter, as always, got to have fire and the knife. What else should go in there? That's all I'm going to ask. Just a small, small thing. Now, I don't need fishing hooks. I'm not out there. I don't live in the country. So this has to be more of an urban, suburban little survival kit in case I'm just going out with nothing. I want to drop it in my pocket. So drop in the comments what you think I should put uh, else in here. You know what I'm saying? Terrible grammar, uh, grammar, but tell me what else should go in there and uh, and help me out. Okay. Uh, before we get to Knife Life news, I have very exciting news of my own. I just wanted to show you that the Nova 2 prototype from the great and powerful Hogtooth Knives and Matt Chase is here, and I want to show it off. Uh, all the information uh, for the pre-order will be, I will be announcing that, you know, very soon. Of course, I'm going to blab about it uh, nonstop. But for now, uh, just know that this is, this is the prototype, and it's not changing much from here. Uh, I'm going to turn down the light one, and, and no, I'm going to, there we go. All right, so I had to turn the light down a little bit on, on this knife because the handle is ivory G10. It's not white. It is an off-white. There we go. Ivory G, uh, G10. So this is a sax slash kiridashi. How much of a sax it is, I don't know, but I've been calling it that. But in looking at it, it is way more a kiridashi blade. Uh, but if you're just listening, uh, straight spine straight edge rising up to a center line point um hollow ground wickedly sharp stupidly sharp um and you've got a, an acid stone wash so it's a dark blade but you got that stone wash so when you use it you don't see much damage at all 154 cm blade steel you can see i've used it a little bit here uh, and then red liners. I love the way that looks, that ivory and the red and then the dark of the steel. Let's see. You've got jimping. You've got the hog tooth knives, uh, laser etched logo there. He just got a new laser etcher. And then you have the uh, knife junkie logo right there on the other side. Uh, and where it says prototype, it will be numbered just like the Nova one. Um, and like the Nova one, probably. Uh, well, like the Nova one, probably this is going to be a popular knife. So I'm excited about it. Uh, I, I have a feeling that this is more utilitarian and, and useful to a lot of people. So I, this might be a more popular knife than the Nova one, but since they're all handmade, uh, you know, I'm not sure how many will, uh, restrict it to, but, uh, th these are things that we're talking about right now. So, um, right now sky's the limit. Let's just see. Uh, who wants this? And we'll go from there. Uh, but uh, all that pre-order information for the knifejunkie.com uh, webpage will be uh, up shortly. Just have to finalize the details, get those ducks in a row. But there it is. It's the Nova 2. I'm so excited. Matt Chase is an incredible, incredible knife maker. Everything I have from him is impeccable. Everything I've ever seen from him at his table is on point. As you know, he's an ABS um, journeyman smith, so he knows what he's doing. And uh, I'm very excited about this collaboration. Um, he's a great guy to work with also. So can't wait to get this in the hands of those who want it. Um, let me know. They will all be numbered. Uh, we already have people putting in number requests. So if you have something like that, um, let me know. Uh, but uh, we, will, we will see how many we make and how many we can number. All right, that is the Nova 2 prototype. 
Thank you so much for checking that out. All right, before we get to Life Knife News, be sure to, as we mentioned before, check us out uh, with our newsletter, but also you can check us out on Patreon. That's a good way to help uh, keep the channel going, uh, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You can see the different tiers of support uh, that if you're interested and then and then kind of what you get back uh, for that. So I greatly appreciate it. Um, if not, I just greatly appreciate you being here and listening and if you can't join Patreon, which I totally get, pass the show along to a friend. That is amazing. That That is gold in this world. So uh, do check it out. Also, you can check us out on uh, all of your favorite podcast apps if you want to listen to these golden tones on the go. All right, coming up, Knife Life News right here on the Knife Junkie. Among this week. Among this week's specials at Knive Ship Free, the Knight Elements OSS Dagger is back by popular demand. Made with solid A2 tool steel, this USA-made dagger was designed by master bladesmith Jason Knight. You'll get excellent traction with the handle texture, jimping, and scallops. And the Kydex sheath keeps it secure no matter what you do. The RMJ Tactical Kestrel, made in Chattanooga, Tennessee, is a heavy-duty tomahawk built for everything from camping to breaching buildings and vehicles. It's built on .375-inch thick 80 CRV-2 steel with textured G10 grips. And Christian Lishan makes knives one at a time in his own workshop, and his growing following speaks to the quality he's achieved. We don't get these often, and they won't be in stock for long. Get these deals and other great specials from Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So unless you've been under a rock asleep, and in that case, I admire you and I'm jealous. Uh, Rosecraft has come out with their first double-bladed traditional knife. And it's really cool, really exciting looking. Uh, uh, and Because and, I like multi-bladed slip joints. Uh, this one's the Briar Patch Jack. And uh, as you can see, it is a an equal-ended cigar jack. Uh, so it looks, you know, that's the pattern. That's the handle pattern there. Um, and then it's got that sort of muskrat thing with the two equal sized main blades on either side. Of course, there's got to be one main blade. And in this case, it's a 3.2 inch clip point blade. Beautiful, uh, traditional style clip point blade. Looks more American than a lot of the clip points they've done recently, which have been uh, inspired by the Sheffield England style uh, folders. Uh, folding clip points and then that other quote unquote main blade i'm gonna say that's my quote by the way uh yes you can quote me 3.1 inches of d2 that's a lamb's foot uh blade lamb's foot you say why not a sheep's foot why not a worn cliff uh well here's here's what i can ascertain about that a sheep's foot uh parallel spine and and straight blade edge and then a gently uh but drastically downward um tip to the uh, or downward um, descent to the tip. In a lamb's foot, uh, you have that same extreme uh, and oftentimes sharp downward turn to the tip from the spine, but the spine and the uh, straight edge taper to the tip. It's not parallel, but they taper. So lamb's foot, subtle, but hey, we're people of subtlety here. Uh, I'm very excited about this one. I do have to get my hands on it. Um, I have not yet. As you know, my 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 buying and trading and my priorities shift frequently here. And uh, right now uh, it's shifted away from slip joints, but I got to get this one before it goes away because of that beautiful gray bone uh, that they have on that gorgeous, gorgeous knife. It's available now. A lot of great videos out on it. Uh, so go check that out. The Rosecraft Briar Patch Jack. Uh, next up, one of my favorite all-time designs from Zero Tolerance, uh, the Sinkovich 045. I have the 452. It's just a larger version. Uh, I think Dmitry Sinkovich, who's Belarusian, I think, uh, uh, designer, every designer maker, everything he does to me is just stunningly beautiful and uh, high design. Um, though uh, a lot of them, he's got a, a, a large variation in his design style. In any case, uh, the 0450 has always been my favorite uh, 
Sinkovich design and my favorite ZT line. They did a whole bunch of different versions, starting off with a very exclusive large version that uh, had a, one of those jigsaw blades. Um, but this one is uh, in sort of recent zero tolerance uh, style. It's a retread of an old thing. That's kind of all they seem to be doing, though. They they did create that one new design not that long ago. But this one is the ZT0450CFDAMS. That stands for Damascus. So this beauty is the smaller, you know, the 3.25 inch bladed version of the design. But it's got a gorgeous uh, Vegas Forge Damascus steel blade. Uh, not sure what those steels are, the two steels, but Vegas Forge is known for using CPM 154, AEBL, and 440C in their stainless Damascus. So it's probably a combination of those three or two or uh, something like that. Uh, those are the blades that, uh, those are the uh, blade steels that they make sure are on the cutting edge, I should say, because. Uh, swirled within our other steels uh that scale gorgeous orange red and black and gray marbled carbon fiber that's the kind of carbon fiber that warms the cockles of my heart personally uh staying away from that original basket weave stuff uh that i have on my zero uh, four five two um this comes in at two uh, like let's point two ounces lighter than the original which has the um what do you call it? Titanium face on it. And uh, it's available now. So go check it out. Uh, obviously, this is limited. So if you like this or if you're a collector of the model, you'll want to jump on it fast. All right. Next up from CRKT. Who's been cleaning up their act of late uh, has uh, <laughs> is celebrating their 30th year anniversary uh, with a new knife called the Soldatna. Now, this one is designed by a frequent CRKT collaborator, uh, designer and knife maker, Russ Coomer. Uh, and I think that's a beauty. Now, he originally made a knife, a custom knife like this for the founder of CRKT, Rob Bremer, uh, who he was going to give, who was going to give it to his son uh, for a hunt, I believe. Uh, but look at that beauty. It, it, it was so worthy it got turned into the 30th anniversary knife and it's being made by who do you think who do you think look at that that's right you got it tops how cool is that crkt has lately been collaborating with uh, other u.s makers like hogue and tops uh, to create some of their more premium knives and i think that's a great idea we all know that crkt has uh, has always made great designs and they've always collaborated with great makers and great designers but they've sometimes uh, come up short on the materials and uh, the manufacturer uh, but they lately have been uh, upping their game at going to american manufacturers for some of their stuff which i think is great um, so here you can see the limited edition soldat soldatna uh, which to me sounds like soldier in Russian, but I'm just making that up. So I, who knows? Uh, but uh, this is the this is the fancy version with walnut handles, which I love, and Damascus. That's also Vegas uh, forged Damascus. Or the standard version is in um, Topps's sort of standard 1095 and uh, canvas micarta. Uh, so these are available now directly from CRKT. That's a three and a half inch blade, by the way. So it's uh, it's a little smaller than you might think. I, I was surprised to read that stat. But then I looked at the handle and uh, saw where the arc is in the handle. And I thought oh, that that's about a three and a half inch blade. Beautiful knife. This actually looks like one that would fit nicely in the waistband uh, to carry as an EDC. So CRKT's anniversary knife, 30 years in the business doing cool 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 stuff uh crkt all right uh lastly here boker another uh knife company that's been in uh for a while but uh, a much greater while boker is a very old company and they have been worldwide for a very long time anyway they are releasing a, a new world legal knife funny i should frame it that way uh so this is the worldwide 2.0 and it's a very tactical looking uh knife but it's for those who cannot carry the real tactical knives but they like the aesthetic perhaps uh this is a slip joint uh d2 blade steel that's a 2.25 inch uh drop point blade with a nice fuller this is a two-hand opener 
So you're going to need, this is not a double D10 kind of flipper non-locking thing. This is a slip joint and you need to two-hander. So that's what makes it a worldwide knife. Plus that size, it is small. Uh, the blade is sort of pukoid, puka, puka style, puko style from, uh, from the great north of Europe. G10 handle, uh, deep carry pocket clip, both sides. So you get some of the old world, some of the new world in this worldwide, world legal knife. The Worldwide 2.0 from Boker. Uh, looks like a cool one, uh, especially for those of you out there who can't carry the larger lockers. So you got to go with what you can go with. Uh, Boker, Boker knives, check them out. <laughs> there are some others. Check out Who Knives too. Uh, not for nothing. Who Knives out of Great Britain has some really, really great stuff. Very tactical looking, but also not locking. So. Uh, there are options out there for you all. All right, coming up, state of the collection. I got some cool new knives here I'm going to show you. And then we're going to get to the main event, uh, the recent uh, new knives. Um, but uh, just be sure to, to join us here every week uh, on the Sunday edition show. The Sunday edition is our interview show where I speak with a really interesting knife maker, whether at the peak of his career uh, or her career or just starting out. Uh, designers, manufacturers, reviewers. We talk to everyone uh, that is interesting here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And we have uh, we also have a lot of people still who are interesting out there to pull onto the show. So I try to do that every week. Be sure to join us on Sundays and then Thursday for the midweek supplemental. This week, of course, we will be doing a Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway. So all of that is right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. Coming up, the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Recently, Microtech announced its third generation uh, of many of its knives, and this was one of them, the LUDT. So the, the large underwater demolition team, this is an old knife for them from their Florida days. I mean, that they've been making this knife uh I, I guess since their Vero Beach factory days, which is a long time ago, early 90, or, or 94, 95, 96. Um, anyway, they changed the design uh, to the Gen 3, and you can see a lot of videos of that out there. And I have to say, that change did not thrill me. I do love what they've done with the Troodon and some of the other knives, but I, I'm not, wasn't crazy about what they did with the LUDT, so I felt this panic in my heart, in my collection, in my gut saying, you need a Gen 2 LUDT in your collection, and they're going bye-bye real fast. So I looked around and really found very little except this, and, and all hope is not lost. There are, other, there, there are some other places I hear, uh, but I haven't found those yet. <clears throat> but... This I got from DLT Trading, and it is, um, contrary to what looks blue on my screen, uh, it is purple as the day is long. It is a beautifully purple anodized LUDT from 2023, uh, June of 2023, and um, that's in uh, M390, regular M390, and I'm thrilled to have it thrilled to have this knife and of course i've been into the serrations lately the half serrated blades uh, especially from microtech those teeth are just nasty and they last forever like uh like was mentioned at the top of the show from uh dave brune 4001 who's been carrying his microtech for 25 years they're very robust knives and they're and the uh, serrations just keep them going longer and longer great Great action on this knife. It just flies open. I, I need to tense my arm up. Otherwise, it will show, it will reveal all the areas where I have gone slack. Uh, this knife really thwacks like that. So very, very happy to have this knife in my collection. And um, as I begin to pare down, I think I think I am uh, I'm going about that in the right way this time. I have a, a, a good roster of knives I'm going to be getting rid of 
um, sadly, but moving them along to people who like them. And it will be knives like this that that stay. Knives that have historical relevance to me and then uh, out there. You're like, Bob, shut up. You keep t the justifications just flow. They flow. Uh, but but this is a, a keeper knife and uh, it's worth the saving up for. And I'm glad I got it. <clears throat> Next up, this is one I'm really fortunate to get. Uh, Craig Vincent. Uh, I don't feel uh, uncomfortable saying his name because he's a very frequent commenter uh, on um, Thursday Night Knives and a, and a friend of the show. Uh, he offered me a trade, a cold steel trade. He is a cold steel nut and very happy to say he had something that I really wanted to get. And this is something, uh, a, a ship that passed me by years ago. This is the Twist Master. This is a medium Twist Master. They had a large and a medium. Not sure if they had a small, uh, but it's based on the Openel knife, uh, the French peasant knife. This one, of course, has a deep bellied uh, clip point blade, but where, where it is, is obviously uh, right here on the collar. It's got a collar lock. So you just twist the lock and that thing, there's no way that's folding. I mean, it's just not going to fail on you. Um, a, a, a way more robust version of the Open L. I mean, I, I have to say, uh, I say way more, but I mean, that those knives are incredible and time-tested. This came and went, but you know, it has that cold steel build. So um, it is stout as the day is long. And I think it is also just a cool piece of cold steel history i'm very excited to have it uh i am sending him as i record this i haven't sent it yet uh, i am trading him this steel tiger and uh it's it's not a fair trade because that twist master is no longer around and you can still buy this but um this is what we settled on and i'm i'm happy to send that along i'm sure that'll go on his uh daily carry as he carries like 12 cold steels a day um but thank you, Craig, for this Twist Master. Great trade. And then he threw a gift in there, which you're going to see uh, shortly in our main event. Uh, but, man, I've wanted one of these for years. And I've seen them come up for sale now and again on eBay. Um, but I haven't been looking for them, so I'd, I've never pulled the trigger. I'm just thrilled to have this. Thank you, sir. All right. Next up, let's see. Uh, oh, how did I forget this? Okay. I, well, I didn't. I'm going to show you right now. Here is the Hogtooth Little Ruffian. This is the very first Hogtooth Little Ruffian right here. And I'm so excited to show you this. Uh, you know the Ruffian. I carry that thing all the time. Big, A bigger 5-inch. Uh, but to me, it's an EDC blade. I carry it on me. Uh, or no, it's about 4.75. This one is a radical reduction in size. Uh, you've got nearly a four finger grip for me, like uh, for anyone with larger hands. And that's a lot of people. Uh, this will be a three finger knife for me. I can just barely get all four fingers on and in reverse grip. I got it. I got it in hand perfectly, but it's a beautiful little 154 cm uh, clip point. It's got that long, dramatic clip point, putting the center, uh, putting that tip right center line. Great belly. Very nice, long, usable uh, bit of straight blade there. And this, with that awesome sheath and the discrete carry cop, uh, pocket clip, is a great pocket carry. Of course, that's not, uh, for me, if this were mine, which it's not, this is uh, the first one ever made, and I just said, uh, let me check it out. Can't quite afford to get this one right now because I just paid for the prototype of the Nova 2, but I wanted to check it out, and man, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, so this one will be, uh, this is now available. He's going to have, I think, 25 of these at Blade Show. He's going to make some of these, make a, a batch of these in the next few months as he works on the Nova 2. But I, I got to get that information to him. And that's so that's not happening yet. But uh, look at that. Just a gorgeous little blade, man. Uh, this is an excellent drop in the pocket, small EDC. But I mean, that blade is three, to, uh, three and a quarter inches. So it's not that small. Uh, but for the overall length of a fixed blade, it is. So very nice setup here. All right. And then lastly, this one is very cool. This one is very cool. Sent to me by Chaz Fisher. Chaz Fisher was on this show uh, speaking for 
uh, Boker. We were speaking about Boker knives, and uh, he has since left Boker because they took a tack, a different tack, uh, more towards EDC, less away from the tactical stuff. And uh, Chaz Fisher is a lifelong martial artist and outdoorsman and practitioner of the bladed arts. And he, uh, so he left the company. He formed a company with his knife making brother. And uh, so this is Fisher Blades, and this is their first knife out. And it is a pocket fixed blade knife, uh, similar to uh, in spirit to the Amtac Northman. Um, look at this thing. It's called the Beckwith Covert. Uh, Colonel Beckwith was the guy who started Delta Force. And uh, there it is. It drops in the pocket. So only about this much peeks out. And you draw it, and there you have an incredible uh, Tonto blade. The Tonto blade with the uh, thumb ramp puts that point uh, in the center line, just slightly north of center line, gives you that long straight edge there, and then the shorter straight edge. You've got a finger guard stopping the finger from going on the blade because this, and then you have a quillion back here for drawing and a, a thumb uh, rest in the back if you're going to use this uh, in the in the reverse grip and then of course that quillion helps you draw but in speaking with Chaz about this knife and I'm going to make a uh, uh, an in-depth video and have him back on the show to talk about the formation of Fisher Blades and this first knife uh, but he's weapons forward which <laughs> I really really appreciate this is first a self-defense everyday carry knife and he does not intend this to be a pull it out and use it to cut your toast, pull it out to cut string, cut, pull it out to cut a box knife. He intends this to be your all the time on you defensive weapon. And I respect that so much. But I got to say, I've been carrying this quite a bit and it makes a great EDC uh, in addition to a great uh, last ditch uh, pocket defensive weapon. But man, so I, that does not come up in my life often. Thank the heavens. Uh, as a matter of fact, it never comes up. Thank you. Knock on wood. Uh, but what does come up are EDC tasks. And what I do have on me are defensive knives like this one. So they get used. And uh, this AEBL is not going to dull uh, quickly from the kind of stuff I use it for. So Chaz, uh, I want to tell you directly, you've designed an amazing uh, uh, EDC weapon, but you've also designed an amazing EDC fixed blade. Uh, for everyday tasks. Sorry to say, I know that's not your main purpose, but it, it is excellent at it. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the knives that inspired it, of many, and we talked about that, but one of the knives that inspired this is the Delica, the ergonomics of the Delica. You can see that in that thumb ramp. And the, uh, oh, there we go, just got to get focused. You can see that in the, in the thumb ramp, and it really puts a lot of, uh, pressure towards the tip it also uh, when you engage when you hold this knife in this um saber grip uh, it also pushes the edge downward giving you sort of a downward raked uh edge here which makes in in a slashing motion uh, this tip very very effective um so i mean you're getting a lot of uh, defensive you're getting a lot of EDC. I know that that's not his main thing. And when I talk about this knife in the close-up video, I'm definitely going to push the weapon aspect of it because it does make a great weapon. Um, it's set up for in the pocket uh, carry. This is the right-handed sheath. You, you draw it like this. I also requested a left-hand sheath because you know I like to carry things uh, blade forward. But I found that in just carrying it standard like this with the sh with the uh, with the clip that chips, you can get it in that reverse grip just fine uh, in a Pakal style grip. So I'm really, really excited about this. I'm going to be showing this off quite a bit coming up. The Fisher Blades Beckwith Covert. Uh, he's going to make, they will be designing, um, the Fisher Brothers will be designing and have other larger knives in the offing. Uh, in, in both this theme and in others. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, this first showing, which is USA made, AEBL, and uh, mine is numbered, number 44. Thank you very much. Um, that's my favorite number. These things are uh, USA made and are available now. So do check them out. 
uh, Fisher Blades, Fisher uh, Blade Company. All right, so uh, you, we're going to see that knife and a couple of others that we've just looked at in this next list. But before we get there, let's talk about this T-shirt. This is the T-shirt of the week, featured T-shirt of the week, knife skills or life skills. And I couldn't agree more with that. Ask any chef, ask any Boy Scout. Knife skills are life skills. Uh, the knifejunkie.com slash shop is where you find these gorgeous T-shirts designed weekly by the great and powerful Jim our producer here and you know you know who jim is uh but this is some of the some this is one small of the creative things he does every week for this show that didn't come out exactly right but you know what i'm saying he's constantly making stuff and uh i love the t-shirts he's been making knife skills or life skills uh but if this one doesn't isn't the one for you go check out the page after page of the really cool t-shirts he's developed uh the knife junkie.com slash shop and then uh well i see the, the subscribe button right there so subscribe also it went away but that's now i'm just holding my hands oddly right here <laughs> thank you uh go subscribe uh and then you'll get this content coming to you uh all the time we we have breached 31,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'm very proud of that. And uh, well, speaking of Jim, it couldn't have happened without Jim. That is for damn sure. All right, let's talk about recent new knives. I just, I, I feel like I've gotten a whole bunch of knives recently that I haven't done close up videos of. Uh, my close up videos are my least popular videos, uh, but I feel like I have to do them because there are people who want to see these knives up close, you know, obviously under the camera so you can kind of examine them. And then I yammer at length. So, uh, you know, you can silence it and just watch them. Uh, but I want to show some new ones that have come out because I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm getting behind on my close up videos. And I want to make mention of all these great things I've gotten in the house recently. Okay, first up. I've been on a Microtech tear. That's what pulled me out of my uh, slip joint phase, as I was talking about when we were talking about the Briar Patch Jack from Rosecraft. Um, so it's always something very compelling that pulls me out of something else very compelling. Uh, the, and it was this knife. It was the Amphibian uh, from Microtech and in the Ramlock version. Uh, the I was talking about Microtech before. I was talking about their Vero Beach, Florida days. Well, that's when the Microtech Amphibian was first born. And they only made six of them. And it was a legendary blade. And I'd seen pictures of them. And then at another point, they dusted off the design. And they were a very expensive, uh, small batch kind of production. I don't remember when that was. But then they brought it out for main release this year uh, in 2023, this past year. And... Um, man alive i just i couldn't believe that they were making them in a in a um in an easily uh, acquired way and also not out of reach for me if i save up these are 300 dollars knives and i saved up for it uh, i saved up for this um and i'm i'm grateful i did uh, because i love this knife and uh, i'm i'm it, it oh, okay what am I trying to say? It brought me back to, to locking tactical knives. It reminds me so much of one of my very, very earliest favorites, the Commander from Emerson, that I had to jump on it. So I got this and was so shocked and astounded uh, by the feel of it, by the um, solidity of it, by the build of it. And um, what, what actually got me to... Um, get this was not only the design and and being thrilled that they released the design but having recently had in hand one of these this is the microtech stitch aluminum handled uh, ramlock version and this one uh, this was a knife that i had on loan from jock's knife and i sent it to him and then uh, and I said boldly, oh I don't need now having this stitch in hand I don't need one because of that cutting edge to handle ratio uh, and then it never left my mind. And then I got a, um, a counterfeit version in a trade. Uh, and I was like, I should get the real one. <laughs> and I got it. And I've been carrying this thing all the time. I love the stitch. Uh, and it's the Ramlock version. So it's got the um, that full block of um, titanium there that goes, or steel. I think that's steel. That locks into the back of the steel interface, or that locks into the back notch of the tang there. And instead of a bar lock, which is just a bar, 
and two Omega str springs. This is a full block of steel here and a coil spring on a rod. So, I mean, to me, uh, it, it, it gives me a lot more confidence. I know that the very early versions of the Ram lock slipped a little bit, or some people had that experience. They have ironed that out very nicely and uh, not experiencing that. Uh, so really high on the Microtech uh, uh, vibe. Um, I reached out, or I didn't reach out. I was, here. this was actually the third knife. Um, I had the Heretic out the front, uh, Manticore, very, very cool knife, but uh, I wanted more Microtech and I thought I could maybe uh, work that out. So I brought that on, the sh on uh, Thursday Night Knives and uh, my good buddy Dave of This Old Sword Blade Review said, I have a Microtech to trade with you. And it happened to be exactly the one that I wanted. So right here, the ultra, uh, the um, SOCOM Elite Auto. I'm a huge fan of the SOCOM Elite, as mentioned up in the uh, comments of the week. Uh, my my road trip knife is, the, is a 2023 Tonto Manual SOCOM Elite, which is just such an amazing knife it it became my road trip knife due to the fact that i had a glass breaker and was my very first glass breaker knife so uh that that won that part and and now it's a su superstition <laughs> if i go driving uh, longer than an hour it's got to be the uh, socom elite in my handle in, in my pocket uh so uh dave had this for me we traded and hopefully he's happy with the trade because uh, I am happy with this trade. Uh, this was a 2018 build. And like the LUDT I showed you before, and I'm about to show you again, man, it kicks like a mule, especially with that four inch blade. Uh, it comes out like crazy. Now, look at here. Look at here. Uh, the uh, Amphibian and the SOCOM Elite. Big knives, four inch blades. Love that. Okay, and then lastly, the LUDT. I won't go into depth about that because I just did. Uh, but so my Microtech collection has now nicely fleshed out. I have three other Microtechs that you've seen a million times. So I have seven. That's over five. So that's an official sub-collection uh, per Dave's rules. Actually, this old sword's rules. I like those rules. Uh, so very happy with the microtechs uh, i would like to get a hera too or uh, yeah hera too i would like to get a troodon the new troodon and of course uh i'm going to be looking at the um the no no blade play out the front that they have coming out too <sighs> it's going to be dangerous at blade show this year because usually i avoid the production companies and and do a lot with the custom uh makers but i'm going to go to that microtech booth and i'm going to buy something this year it's going to happen all right, next up, notable gifts, notable gifts. First up uh, is the Swiss Army II from Byron Kennedy. Byron, thank you so much. Byron of Splitting Slices uh, sent me this as a thank you for the knives I sent him uh, when he announced his his channel. And I know he's got a lot of, uh, lot of people who are very supportive of him in the knife world because he is constantly around uh, in all the chats on all the many, many shows. Um, and so I'm very, very happy that he sent me this. I mean, I, I'm so grateful. Uh, it sounds like, man, I'm sorry about that noise. If you can hear it. Um, sounds like my daughter's taking a shower. Uh, there we go. She turned the water on fully. Okay. Bob DeMarco. He had, put in that blade isn't that beautiful this is uh the 93 millimeter these are the largest the a uh knives and and i gotta say with those two extra millimeters the blade looks better so beautiful beautiful engraving on there bob demarco of course and then the knife junkie what a class act. Check out Split and Slices. He's got a lot of great videos going up uh, not just about knives um completely i mean knives are always the entree uh, but he's got a lot of interesting things going on there so check out split and slices thank you so much byron for this beautiful gift but before i put this away of course this is the swiss army 2 a knife i was really wanting uh when i got the swiss army 1 and that's the reason that gorgeous hawkbill blade now this is still a single layer swiss army knife so it's got a single um spring but it's got that awesome hawkbill blade, which, as you can see from all the gunk on it, has been getting tons and tons of use. 
Thank you. Thanks a million, Byron. I really, really love this knife and uh, appreciate it. I would have loved the Swiss Army too if I had found it on my own, but having a, a gift from you with those engravings, I really appreciate it. Next up, showed this off a lot last week, so I'm not going to go too into depth about it. But here is the old Confederate style Bowie my brother got me uh, recently. He also got me a K bar. I won't show you here because you've seen plenty of K bars. That one is also awesome. Uh, but he got me this knife. Uh, I believe it was for my birthday last year, but I didn't see him. So when I saw him just recently, he unloaded a couple of gifts on me, <laughs> which is so cool. You know, I talk about him a lot because he's he's a great guy. He's my older brother and. Um, yeah, I look up to him in a lot of, a lot of different ways, not just because he gives me cool knives, uh, but he's just, uh, he's a stand up man and, uh, someone to be admired. So I love this thing, uh, for that reason, but also just look at that wicked blade, my God. And, uh, old, very, very old, very pitted, but solid as hell. That swedge is sharp and these are both sharp and uh, this is just a nasty weapon i don't care what anyone says oh yeah you use it for hunting and trapping and splitting wood and all the other things this is a bowie for fighting and killing and i love it those downward uh downward upward s uh, style quillians look very confederate to me or very southern uh from what i've seen in my research and that's a nice heavy walnut handle so great knife and then my bro made this sweet sheath for it yeah, love that. All right. Uh, next up from him also uh, is the Kissing Cranes Stiletto. Now, this one is not an auto, um, but it's got that same uh, stiletto look and setup. Uh, Italian style stiletto with the double quillions. And when I picked it up, I saw that. I saw that it was a back lock, but I instinctual, instinctively pushed down on that quillion because on a lot of the automatics, that's how they... That's how they unlock. Um, beautiful Chris shaped blade with the upturned tip. If it were a Filipino Chris, it would be a downward tip for just nasty uh, hawk bills slashing. Uh, but here it's upturned um, and just beautiful. That's real stag. You can see it from the side, uh, uneven, and you can see all the pores in it. Uh, but that doesn't appear to be real brass. So kind of an interesting combination there. Great, great knife. And then last up here, uh, this was a gift from Craig Vincent with the Twistmaster. And uh, it is this really cool kukri. Now, I have a feeling that that this was a like U.S. Cavalry or Bud K, because um, I have another one very similar to it. But this one has a very nice sharp edge on it. Thank you so much, Craig. You didn't have to do that, but I'm, you know, I'm glad you did because I love this. Uh, kukri it's got a great handle um really feels great in hand it's big and thick and heavy but not too heavy uh to wield and to swing around uh yeah i've done a bit of that i've done some paper cutting uh this would be better for uh you know not for paper slicing but uh, it's got a pretty oblique but very sharp edge but i want to show this too he sent it with the sheath I can't quite get it to fit in the sheath, uh, but he put it in this to keep it safe. And I got to say, Craig, this is uh, better than the sheath itself. It is a really well-made um, cardboard and duct tape sheath. I just might keep it in here, man. I, I really actually like that. Uh, oh, wrong way. So uh, there you go. Well, no, that was the wrong way. Thank you so much, Craig, uh, for this beautiful kukri. Um, you didn't have to do that, but like I said, I'm glad you did. All right, next grouping of knives uh, are prototypes and new-to-the-market knives. Um, I'll show you the two that I've already showed so far real quick. So prototype-wise from Hogtooth, got the mini, or not mini, the little ruffian. Love that thing. Uh, I think this is going to be a big seller for him because people love the ruffian. Every time I show it, they're like, oh my gosh. But I know that people also love smaller fixed blade knives. So I, I have a feeling this is going to be a golden boy for him. I'm going to do a comparison video with the big one and and uh, also with the, just to show you if, you, if you're familiar with the Nova One size, this is smaller even than the Nova One. And this, of course, the Nova Two is the same dimensions as the Nova One. 
All right. Next up in the prototypes and new to the market, of course, uh, I was just talking about this. That's the Beckwith Covert from Fisher Blade Com uh, Fisher Blades. I'm not going to go into that. I just waxed poetic about it, but uh, believe you me, of uh, like these two fixed blade knives, I've, I'm so happy and feel very uh, honored to to get an early crack at before they go uh, broad. Uh, not abroad, but broadly, <laughs> they they go hit the wider market. Um, but so this company, Tesseract, sent me this, and I'm really excited about this knife. And uh, I talked about it on last week's midweek supplemental, and I posited that it was OEM'd by Kaiser, and I found out that it is not. I did not push it. I don't know who made this knife, um, but I know who designed it. Tesseract is a... Uh, uh, a group, a brain trust, if you will, of actually that term is usually used in negative connotations. It's a it's a group of designers, um, product designers who love knives and uh, EDC gear. And they're out of, I believe, Kansas City. And um, you say Missouri or Kansas? And I say, I'm not sure. Um, but we know that that's a good uh, knife town as uh, I think Finch Knives is is from Kansas. Um, Kansas City. But anyway, uh, this thing is really awesome. It's a, 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 a hefty and solid um, uh, sheep's foot blade. That's S35VN. It's got incredible action, incredible action, uh, stout and beautiful with those liners. It's got orange liners, Tesseract very classily uh, put on the backspacer, and then just this cool little logo, three-dimensional cube tesseract thing and the nf1 so really superb action um and jumping all the way up the blade almost all the way up so a fully extended thumb can make use of that uh that jimping as well as a forefinger in a sort of utility cut uh i am gonna do a well you'll see a close-up video of this this week it's already scheduled and uh, i i very much like this knife i hope this company does awesome because uh they've got they've got the right the right stuff here um and it's kind of similar uh in blade shape to this one here which is also a winner and i was talking about that before that is the tactile knife company chupacabra um, which I got uh, right before they sent it to me right before it went to market. And uh, the first day, like within several hours, it was sold out. Uh, so um, not only not only am I impressed with the company, but I'm impressed with this particular outing because it'll get more people behind the wheel of a tactile knife. Um, I think that with uh, inflation and with money being tight the way it is, I, I do think that people are saving up more for uh, for knives. At, uh, at least I am. And, I, and, and anecdotal, uh, anecdotal evidence from Thursday Night Knives would corroborate that uh, people are saving up to get more special things for them. Whatever is special and whatever is saving up, uh, even 40 bucks, like not everyone has 40 bucks disposable income. And, and I totally get that. I've been in that position. I was in that position for years. So you're not just dropping, you know, I got five new Civivis. So you save up 40 bucks. It might take a few weeks of, you know, here and there, but, but do it. It's worth it. And then as things scale up, as you get older, I'm, I'm in my fifties now. I've had time to accumulate stuff and money. And, uh, you know, not like I've got tons of that either accumulated, but it gets better and better and better. I'm speaking to my younger listeners. Um, so a knife like this at 250 bucks, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. But if you like tactile knife and you've uh, and you believe the trusted voices out there who who think their knives look great, and then you look at this and this design resonates with you, this is something that you can save up for. And I'm really happy a company like this who takes pride in everything being made in house in Dallas, Texas. So 100% USA made, including all the materials. Um, this is a way to do that. And so I'm happy they're doing they're doing this knife and maybe the chupacabra leads to other efforts, you know, that are you maybe you change the blade steel, make it a little uh, more pedestrian and maybe that brings the price down even further. So and the fact that they're using aluminum and it's not highly milled like all their titanium um, is exciting. So very, very psyched about that. All right. Last little category here. I'm not going to go deep into that. Are the knives of my own design that have 
that are just about to come out. Of course, I just talked about the Nova One, uh, and we'll be talking about the pre-order for this very shortly. Uh, this is not under my control, and I'm very psyched about that. This is the TKEL Knives Agent 001. Uh, this is the final uh, prototype printing uh, resin 3D print. And man, that resin 3D printing, by the way, is pretty cool because uh, Tim Kell uh, printed out the scales separately as he would as he would make the knife and assembled it. And so this is going to be a double edged fighter. It fits exactly in the um, profile of the Night Stalker. Um, my favorite of the T Kell knives, knives the most frequently carried T Kell knife and also his most popular model. So this is the same size, same uh, format, uh, well, slightly different format in that it's not a ringed knife, uh, but it's meant to be carried horizontal on the on the uh, waist. You can carry it however you want, but uh, it was designed to be drawn and used in reverse grip like this. Um, so I'm very excited. This he uh, Tim just sent me uh, pictures of it hewn in metal, uh, not yet uh, not yet heat treated, but. These are coming out real soon. And of course, you're going to hear a ton about it from me and from Tim on his live show. So there we go. Those are a recent new knives. Thanks for uh, watching that because I needed to get it off my chest. I've had a lot of new stuff here, some stuff I need to make videos of. Some have gotten mentioned here and there, but I wanted to uh, bring them all together and show them to you. Um, we're coming up on 500. Next uh, in two weeks, we're going to have episode 500 here. And uh, I'm really excited about that. I don't think I've been that consistent in anything in my entire life except for my bad habits. So uh, I'm, I'm thrilled about that. And uh, a lot of that is thanks to you guys and gals out there who watch and listen. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jim and I are really have, have a lot of fun doing this. And um, we're glad you guys like it. So uh, that's it for the Knife Junkie podcast today. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.